How's everybody doing today? Now that was almost perfect. We're going to try this one more time. Teachers, plug your ears. Here we go. Kids, how you guys doing today? That, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that right there is how we wake ourselves up and get ready for the word in the morning. So, good morning, everybody. I love you guys. It's great to be back here. But I'm actually not doing the lesson today. A friend of mine is. I'm going to introduce her in just a second. But before I do, I want to make sure you guys remember what we talked about last week. Who remembers what we're studying this year? What is it in Scripture that we're going to take some time to learn about throughout the course of this year? Sir, the seed. Great job, man. Great memory. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and that, the tortoise and the hare was just a reminder that you guys hear these kinds of stories all the time. The sower, the parable of the sower, or the man who threw the seed, the farmer who cast out the seed, that was a special kind of story that Jesus told in the New Testament. And does anybody remember what we call those stories? Does anybody? Sir, with the black mask coming up, it looked like a warrior. Yes, you, right there. Parable. Good job. Parable it is. And Jesus taught lots of parables. Because remember, a parable is a story that gives us a picture that helps us to remember the main point that Jesus wanted to teach. Again, an example is the tortoise and the hare. It's not about bunnies and turtles. What it's about is pride and endurance. The parable of the man who threw out the seeds, the sower, that's not about seeds. It's about living rightly with the Lord and being planted in a good place that we can bring fruit, heavenly spiritual fruit to those around us. Are you guys ready to learn another parable today? All right, good stuff. Well, as you guys know, I'm the student life pastor. That means that I'm over all the big kids and the youth in middle school, like high school, middle school. And I'm also over all the little kids, which is you guys, elementary all the way down to preschool, kindergarten, even six-month-old babies. So I'm over a lot of kids. And I need help being over all those kids. So I have a youth director and a children's director. And today I would like to introduce to all of you my children's director, and that is Miss Jessica Castro. Please give her a warm round of applause as she comes down. Now some of you might know her mom, Miss Pam Castro. That's right. Who's in Miss Castro's class? All right, so if Miss Castro is your teaching mom, Miss Jess Castro is kind of like your aunt, your teaching aunt, okay? So there we go. All right, so here we go, or cousin. So here's the deal. Or in this case, it'd be sister, I guess, right? It'd be your sister. All right, how many of you see Miss Jess in her office in the Sea Wing throughout the day? Yeah. So sometimes you guys will see Miss Jess working in her office. She's working on crafts for the kids on Sunday, and she's putting lessons together and curriculum together for all of our volunteers. And so if you walk by her office, as long as your teacher lets you, be sure to say hi to her because she loves you guys. She loves kids. She's so excited to be here. And I'm excited that you guys get to learn the Word of God from her today. So will you guys all do me a favor? And reach out your hand to Miss Jess. We're going to pray for her right now. Let's close our eyes and reach our hands out. And we're going to pray that God speaks through her to our hearts today. Lord, we thank you so much for Miss Jess. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought her to this place to be a blessing to these kids. I know that she loves them so much and that she loves you so much. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that your word would be spoken through her to our hearts. And we would know today that we heard from you as she speaks to us. Bless her now, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's kids said? Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Jess. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here, and I also brought some props for you all. So today's story that we're going to talk about comes from the book of John, chapter 15. 
And in this story, Jesus talks about grapevines. And so I brought some grapes in case you guys forgot what those look like. All right. I'll put them right here. So Jesus told this story because he knew that the people he was talking to would know all about how to grow grapes and vines and what it takes to take care of a vineyard. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think anyone here has any experience growing grapes or running a vineyard. That's okay. So let me just, before I tell the story, I want to give you a little bit of a background about grapes because they are a really tricky plant to grow. So the way that they grow is first, you need really good soil. So you have to make sure the soil is good and has lots of nutrients. And then the farmer plants the vine. And the farmer has to make sure that he waters it every day. Um, he looks after it. He makes sure that the plant doesn't need anything. And then the way that the vine grows, it grows out like this with two big branches. And then out of the vine grows these little branches. And then from those little branches, then you get some fruit. Now, there's a lot of work that goes into it. He can't just plant the seed and let it grow. So these branches, not every single one can be kept. Some of them need to be pruned. Now, this can be the most expensive and time-consuming part of growing a grapevine. So the farmer has to think of a lot uh, before he prunes something. He has to make sure that he does it at the right time. If he does it too early, then the frost will come and kill all the grapes, and it won't be able to bear fruit. If he does it too late, then the vine won't, the branch won't perform as well as it could, and he won't get as much fruit as he should. If he does it during the rainy season, then the plant will get mold and disease, and it won't be able to bear fruit either. So he has to make sure that he prunes it at the perfect time, and he has to make sure that he can't, he can't just not prune it. He can't let every single branch grow because then it would be too much for the branch to handle and none of the fruit would ripen. So he has to make sure that he's looking at the branches and that he's cutting away what wouldn't bear fruit so that way the branch can bear good fruit that we can eat. Now, Jesus makes this comparison to show how God cares for us. So in this comparison... God is the gardener. He's the one who is our creator. He takes care of us. And Jesus is the vine. So he is that big part that's rooted in the ground where the branches stem out of so the branches can get their life uh, and the nutrients from so that they can bear fruit. And us, we are the branches. So the branches need to be connected to the vine, which is Jesus. So if the branch is not connected to the vine... It will get weak, it'll shrivel up, and it won't bear fruit. And then the, the gardener comes and cuts away the branch and throws it away. So, just like those branches, we need to make sure that we stay connected to Jesus so that we can bear good fruit. So, we need to rely on Jesus and stay connected to the vine. So, how do we do that? There are two ways that Jesus shows us that we can stay connected to the vine. This is through love and through obedience. We can show Jesus how much we love him by obeying his commands. When we obey his commands, we're showing Jesus how much we love him. And when we have an obedient heart, that makes Jesus so happy. And when we make Jesus happy, that gives us absolute joy. So... We need to stay connected to Jesus. We need to love him. We need to obey his commands. Now, when we stay connected to Jesus and we obey his commands, that's like how we accept Jesus into our hearts and we live our life for him. Now, Jesus also commands us to love others the way that Jesus loved us. Jesus showed us love by coming to earth and serving and dying on the cross for our sins. We can show others love by helping each other and by putting other people's needs before our own. When we are giving other people that love and that attention and not being selfish, then we're able to bear the good fruit that makes Jesus so happy. Now, 
When we love others the way that Jesus loves us, we're, make, we're showing Jesus our love. And when we show Jesus our love, then something happens and we discover how much, how deep Jesus loves us. And then our connection with him gets even stronger. We, the friendship that we start with him now in this life, that lasts forever and ever. And when we give our hearts to him, then we get to spend eternity with him in heaven. So... I want us all to remember this week, remember what it means to be a branch and to stay connected to the vine that is Jesus, because he's going to give us everything that we need to bear good fruit. And he's going to give us life and joy and forgiveness and eternity in heaven with him. And that's what he created us to do. All right, so let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it is true. And I thank you that you are a good teacher who explained things in a way that we can understand and that we can remember. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would fill every single person in this room and that you would give us all an obedient heart and that we would be able to bear good fruit through you, um, the vine that is Jesus, Lord. Um, I pray that every single day you would help us to rely on you and that our connection would grow stronger and stronger every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Miss Jessica. Let's all give it up for Miss Jessica. How amazing was she? Thank you, thank you, thank you for for sharing the love of Christ through his word this morning. So as you all start heading back to your classes, we're going to take the next several days, right, of the rest of this week especially, to focus on what Miss Jessica said and share the love of Christ through others by staying connected Staying connected to Jesus Christ this week, guys. Right? All right, let's give it up one more time for Miss Jessica. Thank you so much. She did such an amazing job. All right, Smithtown Christian School Elementary, you guys are dismissed.